Hello everyone, in this video, we will discuss the carburetor fuel supply system. We will explore the technology that underlies the way the internal combustion engine operates by regulating the air-fuel mixture. From its history, design, key components to its basic working principles, we will explore the carburetor system and how it plays an important role in vehicle performance. As modern engines transition to fuel injection technology, it is important to understand the origins of this evolution and why carburetors remain relevant for certain vehicles. Here is an overview of the carburetor. Let's begin with the history. The carburetor was first used in 1885 and was invented by Carl Benz, a German engineer who is well known for founding Mercedes-Benz and creating the world's first four-stroke engine, which is still in use today. In 1893, Hungarian engineers Janos Czonka and Donat Banki designed a device similar to the one previously mentioned. Later, Frederick William Manchester further developed this carburetor for use in four-wheeled vehicles. The carburetor is a device that mixes fuel oil with oxygen in the air, also known as carburizing, then evenly feeds the carburized fuel into the combustion chamber during intake, compresses, ignites, and expands to produce engine power. There are two types of carburetors, fixed venturi and variable venturi. In a fixed venturi carburetor, the diameter of the venturi cannot be changed. The variable venturi carburetor, on the other hand, is widely used in small engines, such as motorcycle engines. This video will focus on the variable venturi type of carburetor. Before discussing the working system, it is important to understand the anatomy of the carburetor. From the side, we can see the gasoline pipe or gas intake. Next, we have the idle mixture screw, also known as the idle screw or wind adjustment screw. The third component is the choke lever, and the fourth is the float chamber. From the front, the air intake and idle air intake holes are visible. Moving further into the carburetor, we can see the spring, variable venturi, tapered needle or jet needle, main jet, idle jet, float, floating valve, idle pipe or ventilation from the float chamber, and the choke plate. These are the parts of the carburetor. Now let's discuss the working system. The carburetor operates when the engine starts working. During the intake step, the piston creates suction or negative pressure at the intake. This is possible because the principle of air dictates that it will always move to an area with lower air pressure, producing an even and stable pressure in a volume or room. This condition is also known as atmospheric pressure. The negative pressure that occurs in the combustion chamber will suck air through the carburetor's intake, and the air will move through the venturi, which regulates the negative pressure in the carburetor. However, in its initial state, the venturi is closed, causing the tapered needle to also close the main jet. Simultaneously, air enters the floating chamber through the idle pipe. This condition creates turbulence, lifting gasoline out of the idle jet and mixing it with air to maintain idle conditions on the vehicle. Typically, when the engine is still cold, the RPM cannot remain stable. The temperature of the combustion chamber can affect the results of combustion. However, this issue can be resolved by adjusting the choke lever on the carburetor. As the name implies, this choke reduces the supply of air entering through the air intake and increases the air entering through the idle pipe. This creates greater turbulence in the floating chamber, resulting in a higher ratio of incoming liquid fuel mixture to compensate for the reduced air intake. The purpose of this process is to enhance the combustion intensity in the engine, thereby accelerating the increase in engine temperature to reach the ideal level. Once the engine RPM stabilizes and the ideal working temperature is achieved, the choke lever on the carburetor can be disabled or closed. At this point, the engine speed can be increased using the gas pedal. When we press the gas pedal, the venturi is lifted along with the tapered needle, increasing the air supply and creating greater turbulence in the floating chamber. This causes gasoline to be sucked through the main jet. The further we press the gas pedal, the faster the airflow will be causing greater turbulence to suck in more fuel. As we travel further, 
more gasoline is consumed, causing the float to decrease and opening the needle or float valve to resupply fuel from the tank to the float chamber. This process continues until the float is lifted to its original position, closing the valve once again. The difference between a fixed Venturi and other types of carburetors is that the Venturi diameter cannot be adjusted. However, a throttle valve can be added as a substitute to regulate the amount of air sucked into the engine. Then, we will notice a slight difference in the Venturi section. In this type of carburetor, the Venturi diameter is reduced to increase the airspeed passing through the jet channel. This increase in airspeed also results in an increase in pressure difference between the venturi and the fuel bowl, which aims to create a stronger negative pressure and suck more fuel from the floating chamber. That concludes the information we have on the carburizing system. If you have any critiques, suggestions or questions, please leave them in the comments section below so we can discuss. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.